So in the previous video, we covered how to get started with Perforce, including how to set up a workspace and get files from the server. Now that we have these files on our local machine, let's take a look at some basic operations with Perforce so we can start making some changes to these files and contributing to the code base on the server. So in order to do this, the first thing you're going to want to do is start up P4V. And I'll do that now by typing P4V in my start menu. And here's the dialog that we saw last time that comes up. Obviously, I'll just make sure that my server IP address and port number are correct. I'm logged in as myself. And in the workspace, what we can do is let's go ahead and browse and select the workspace we created last time for this project alpha, which if you recall, just contained two depots. So let's go ahead and select that workspace and say, I want to work on this one. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And what you'll see come up now is, again, our familiar P4V interface. Now, I want to bring your attention to a couple of things here. Usually when I first start up uh, P4V here, I always come down and check here in the dashboard. And what the dashboard is going to do is obviously show us some of the latest information on what other people have been doing on this server. So what I can see here is actually 13 of the files that I have on my local machine are actually older than what's up there on the server. And over here on the right, I can see exactly who has done what to different files. So for example, it looks like I actually submitted three other additional change lists previously. So the server has a lot of different files, namely 13, which are newer than the ones I have currently on my local machine. So this is what's actually really nice about Perforce is this interface allows you to choose when you actually want to download and merge these changes. So you don't actually have to pull down these changes until you're ready. So for example, if you're currently working on some code, you might not want to download somebody else's changes because this might break what you're working on. If you would like a little bit more information, you can even just open up any of these by clicking on the triangles and you can see specifically what was changed uh, and by who. So for now, let's go ahead and collapse these and let's not get these latest revisions here because I want to use it to illustrate a couple of interesting features here at Perforce. So what you can do here with the Perforce here is again, we'll come up here to our workspace interface. Uh, and this pane here on the left shows you basically the status of the files that are on your local machine. So for example, I can drill down on any of these and let's say I want to look into the Arduino depot, maybe this UW Arduino folder, and maybe I can come into here, this template UW folder. And you notice here that all of these files here have these interesting little icons next to them. So the icons tell you a little bit about their status here. So a green dot next to one of these uh, items indicates that you have the latest version of the file on your machine. And you can kind of see that here by the interface. It says, I have version one out of one. Now this yellow triangle is trying to warn you that actually of this file, for example, this one called template uw.cpp, I only have version two of it, whereas the server has version three. So that must have been one of these changes that somebody else on my team made while uh, I was doing something else. So I don't have the latest version of some of these files. There's other icons that kind of help you. For example, let's look at this document called keywords.txt. If you notice here, it has a kind of turquoise bluish check mark up on the right. That actually tells you that somebody else on the team has actually checked out that file right now and is currently working on it. And actually, if I hover over it, you can actually see that, whoops, sorry. If I hover over it, it says that, look, this file has been checked out by another developer. Actually, it looks like it's myself, but it's on a different machine. So I'm working on this file somewhere else on a different machine. So I may want to think twice before I start working on this exact file that somebody else is working on simultaneously. So. That's some of these icons and what they mean. While we're here, tell you what, let's collapse a few of these and maybe let's take a look at, for example, say this readme.txt file. Again, you notice it has a green circle next to it, so it means I have the most current version of this file. One feature I think that's really handy here on the P4V interface here is if I want to find out where any of these files are actually located on my physical machine, I can right click on the file and come down to show in and I'll just say show in Explorer. And when I click that, it will basically bring me directly to that file as it's located on my machine. So apparently on this computer, I have it on the C drive, Project Alpha, Arduino, UW Arduino, and here's this readme.txt file that we were interested in. Now, the reason I wanted to look at this in Explorer here is I actually want to take a quick look at this file 
Let's say I want to edit it. Well, let's take a look at its properties here. And we actually notice here that if you look at the properties, you'll notice that this file is marked as read only. In fact, any of these files that are under version control by Perforce are typically marked read only by default. And this makes a little bit of sense if you think about it here because you really don't want to be changing any files unless the server knows that you're currently working on them. So I should not be able to make any changes to this readme.txt file right now because Perforce has this thing marked as read only. All right, let's say I actually want to make some of those changes. What's the workflow to do that? So in order to do that, we have to first start what's called a change list. So a change list, I like to think of them as almost like a work order or a task order. So a change list would describe what am I trying to change of these version controlled files here. So what I do is I'm going to come over here to P4V. I'm going to click on the pending tab. And you see right here I have this default change list right now. What I can simply do is I want to double click on this. And this is going to bring up a small interface here. And this is going to allow me to write a description of what are the changes that I'm trying to make right now. So I'm going to just say uh, creating an example change list to illustrate how to check out files. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit save. And you'll notice what that does here is I now get this numbered change list showing up in the pending tab. So what this is telling me is this is the 11,235th change to the server files here. And if I click on this little triangle, you'll see that there's actually no files that I've changed yet. So by creating this change list, I'm merely making a container or a place where I can group all of my changes together. So what I would like to do now is change multiple files uh, you can actually change one if you want, but usually you would group one or more files underneath of this single change list. So for example, let's say I really wanted to change and modify this readme.txt file. So we already established that this is now currently marked as read only. I need to get rid of that read only status, but I need to do it through the P4V interface. So to do that, I'm going to come over and find the file I want here in my per workspace pane. And I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say check out. So when I check out this file, I am presented with this other small little dialog. I can add this to uh, a change list. So I'm going to select this, this drop down menu and pick the change list that I, was, that I just created. So I'll click here and I'll hit OK. And you'll notice at that point the icon on this file gets a red check mark on the left. And it's basically telling me that hey, I've actually checked out this file now from the server, and I've told the server that I'm now working on this file, so the rest of my team is also aware of this fact. Now, you see it shows up here underneath the change list as well. And now if I come here to Windows Explorer here, and I right-click Properties and take a look at this, you'll notice that P4V has taken off the read-only status of the file, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm able to make changes to this. So I can now open this up in any text editor that, that I like. And let's just say I'm going to make a small addition here. So I'm going to say this is a small addition to the file. And then I'll go ahead and save this and close it. Great. So at this point, we successfully edited one file. And to illustrate that we can actually edit multiple files and store these all under a single change list, why don't we modify another one? Why don't we take a look at this uh, CMD file here? So again, I'd like to make some modifications to this file so I can either right click and select checkout or an alternative way to do this is you can actually just click on this file, drag it and then drop it onto the change list where you'd like. And as you can see, the file goes underneath this change list. It gets the red mark to show that it has been checked out by the file and uh, by perforce. And I can now come over here, check its properties. And once again, there's no read only, so I'm free to modify this if I would like. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to edit this file. It comes up here. And let's go ahead and again make another small addition to this file and I'll go ahead and file, save, and close. Great, so at this point we have multiple files that we've checked out and edited on our local machine.
Now, in addition to uh, checking out existing files, you may want to be able to add or delete files from the server as well. So for example, let's come over here to our Windows Explorer and let's create a new Word document, how about? So I'll come in here and I'll just say new uh, Microsoft Word document and I'm just gonna call this my document. And I'll go ahead and open this up. And why don't we make a few notes in this file? Hello world. And I'll again go ahead, save, and close this. Now, if you notice here, this file didn't appear over here in my workspace. And that's just a small little, um, I, I don't think I want to call it a glitch here, but it's a little nuance here where I actually need to go up here and hit the refresh button to refresh the view. If I hit the refresh button, you'll notice here that this my document.docx file does show up, but you should notice there's absolutely no icons associated with it, right? So what that means here is this file is not under version control right now, meaning the server has no idea about this document now if I want to add this document to the server I actually have to physically mark it for an addition so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to my p4v interface I'll right click on the document here and I'm just gonna say mark for add and again I get this dialog which is gonna allow me to pick which change list does this go to so I'm gonna use this same change list that we've been creating so far and I'm just gonna say okay so as you can see, again, we get another icon, which is a red plus mark or a red addition mark. So that's great. This file will now be uploaded to the server when I submit this change list. So in a very similar fashion, we can delete files. So for example, if we can find some file that we would like to get rid of or remove from the server, we just need to simply find this within the P4V. Let's, uh, for example, look at this uwarduino.sln, this solution file. If I really don't want this any longer, what I can do is just right click and mark for delete. Again, I'll get the same dialog and I'll put this on the same change list. Now, make a quick note here. When I hit OK, you'll actually see it being deleted from my local machine right away. So we see that it's deleted from my local machine and we get a red X here under my change list, meaning when I submit this change list up to the server, that's when that file will be removed from the server. Now, I actually don't really want to do that, so this actually brings me to another interesting feature here of Perforce is reverting files. So you can make all of these changes to these files, but they actually haven't gone up to the server until you submit the change list. So if you have second thoughts about something or if you discover that you would actually like to um, maybe undo your changes, you can come here to your change list and find whichever file you want. So for example, we just deleted this uh, .sln file and now I'm having second thoughts. I really don't want to do that. I can just right click on this and I can click on revert. So if I click on revert, and revert one more time, it's basically going to undo that delete action. So you see that it gets removed from the change list and the file shows back up in my uh, Windows Explorer. Now, you might want to also think a little bit before you revert. You might want to see, well, what changes did I really make? So for example, you can look at some of these checked out files here. And if I right click on this and I just say diff against have revision or control D, what that's going to bring up is a little dialogue that's going to show you what are the physical changes to this file that you've made between the version on the server and the version on your local machine. So you see that version one of this file looked like this. And what I've now edited is I've added this small little line here at the bottom. So that's a pretty harmless change. I think we can go with that and that seems all right so at this point if you're happy with all of these changes you may want to think about physically sending all of these changes to the server so that the rest of your team can benefit from them so in order to actually submit this change list you need to come over here to the change list uh, in question you can right click on it and click on submit what this is going to do is going to bring up this familiar dialog where you can now make modifications to your change list description if you'd like it will show you what you're about to do to the server and if you're happy with all of these, you can simply hit submit. And what you're going to see is those have now been pushed up to the server and have been modified. And the rest of your team will receive this notification about your modifications in their dashboards the next time they fire up P4V. 
So I hope this has been helpful in showing you how to do some basic operations with Perforce. Uh, in our subsequent video, we'll look at things like some more advanced operations as well as modifying workspaces. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.